If you're looking to get a laptop for programming and don't know where to start, we can help you with that. But first, let's go through what we're looking for in a coding laptop. Preferably, you want a good amount of RAM minus 16 gigabytes to start and a competent CPU that will allow you to compile and test your code faster. Plenty of screen space is never bad and a comfortable keyboard is almost a must as you'll likely be typing for extended periods. If you want to work on multiple displays, you'll want a good port selection, so you don't need to get a dongle or dock. For working on the go, build, portability, and battery life will also be major factors. This article has a few picks to get you started, and hopefully, you can narrow your search and get the best laptop for your needs. The list is a little short for now, but we'll grow as we review more models. We have listed the top five budget laptop for programming 2024, and their key features you need to consider this to help you choose the best one for you. For more information on the product, as always, I've included a link in the description box down below, which are updated with the best prices on each product. Number five, HP Spectre X3614. HP updates its Spectre X360 high-end convertible, now using a larger 14-inch OLED panel with 120 hertz in combination with a current Meteor Lake processor from Intel. In addition, the case was redesigned and Wi-Fi 7 is also available. For years, the Spectre X360 series from HP has been one of the best, but also most expensive consumer convertibles on the market. While HP has used a 13.5-inch display until now, a larger 14-inch model is used for the model year 2024 and the OLED display now runs at 120 Hz. In addition, the brand new Meteor Lake processors from Intel are available and Wi-Fi 7 is also already on board. Our test configuration of the Spectre X3614 U0078ng is available on the market starting from 1,899 euros till $2,047. In addition to the already mentioned 2.8K OLED panel with 120 Hz, it includes the new Intel Core Ultra 7 155H together with its integrated ARC graphics card, 8 cores, as well as an ample amount of storage with 32GB of RAM and a large 2TB PCI SSD. An active input pen and a small docking station with additional connections are also included in the box. HP continues to use a high-quality aluminum case for the Spectre X360, either in gray or blue, but the design has changed fairly significantly. The whole convertible has become more angular. There are now less design elements than in the 2022 -er model, and it lacks the decorative strip around it, for example. The cutoff polished corners in the back are still there, but together with the HP logo, they are the only contrasted elements. This makes the new Spectre look less playful. The quality of the case is extremely high, giving the Spectre a very high-quality look. The cool metal surfaces, which are also fairly resistant to fingerprints, also contribute to this. Although you can still see some fingerprints after a while, the surfaces can be cleaned easily. The convertible is also very robust. It definitely helps here that HP didn't try to build the thinnest device on the market. Everything feels robust and sturdy. The hinges also give a good impression, only allowing some minimal wobbling after moving the device. However, this also means that it is very difficult to lift the display lid using a single hand. Both the base unit and display lid are very robust. The included stylus can be attached magnetically to the right side of the case. Number 4. Dell Inspiron 16 2-in-1 The Dell Inspiron 16 2-in-1 2024 is a Windows convertible laptop. The 7635 model isn't a direct replacement for the Dell Inspiron 16 7620, but rather an alternate model with AMD CPUs. It's available with an AMD Ryzen 5 7530U or Ryzen 7730U CPU, whereas the Intel-based 7630 model, successor to the 7620 from 2024, is available with an Intel Core i5-1335U or i7-1360P memory and storage max out at 16GB and 1TB, respectively. As a 16-inch FHD+, 1920x1200, IPS display, a 1080 webcam with a physical privacy cover and Wi-Fi 6E wireless connectivity. You can configure the laptop with a 64O or 86 watt battery. Ports include two USB as two USB CS, no Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4, an HDMI 1.4, an SD card reader, and a headphone jack. The Dell Inspiron 16 is great for business use. It feels very well built and is relatively easy to carry around for a 16-inch laptop. It has a large display for multitasking, a comfortable keyboard, and a large touchpad. 
Its AMD Ryzen CPU can easily handle general productivity tasks like text processing, spreadsheets, presentations, and video playback. Plus, its battery lasts over 10 hours of light use. The webcam captures a detailed but underexposed image, and unfortunately, the USB-C ports don't support Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4. The Dell Inspiron 16 is good for media consumption. It's fairly easy to carry around, and its battery lasts over 10 hours of video playback. Its 16-inch screen looks sharp and colorful, and since it's a 2-in-1, you can set it up in tent mode when watching a video or use it as a tablet. The downside is that the display doesn't get very bright and struggles with direct reflections, so it isn't suited for sunny environments or outdoors in broad daylight. It also has a low contrast ratio, making blacks look gray in dim settings. As for the speakers, while they get very loud and fire upwards, they sound slightly unnatural, with very little bass. Number 3. ASUS VivoBook 16M1605 The ASUS VivoBook 16M1605 2024 is a budget Windows laptop. It's available with various AMD Ryzen 5000 and 7000 U-series CPUs and integrated graphics. RAM and storage max added 16GB and 1TB, respectively. It has an FHD Plus 1920X100 1610 IPS display, a full-size keyboard with a numpad, a 720 p webcam, and Wi-Fi 6E wireless connectivity. Ports include three USB-S, one USB-C, an HDMI, and a headphone jack. The USB-C supports charging, but no video output. See our unit specifications and the available configuration options in the differences between variants section below. The ASUS VivoBook 16 is mediocre for media consumption. It's easy to carry around, and its battery lasts over six hours of video playback, giving you plenty of time to get through a couple of full-length movies. Its 16-inch IPS display looks decently sharp, However, its low contrast makes blacks look gray in dim settings, and its narrow color gamut makes colors look a tad washed out. Unfortunately, although the speakers get very loud, they sound boxy and unnatural, no bass. We tested the ASUS VivoBook 16 M1605, model M1605 Ye is 52, with an AMD Ryzen 5 7530U CPU, 8GB of memory and 512GB of storage. The CPU, memory, and storage are configurable. The available options are in the table below. Our review applies only to variants with a model number starting with M1605E. We tested the Microsoft Surface Pro 8 2024 in the Platinum Color Scheme with an Intel Core i7-1185G7 CPU, integrated Intel Iris XE graphics, 16GB of RAM, and a 256 gigabytes SSD. The CPU, memory, and storage are configurable. The available options are in the table below. Number two, Apple MacBook Pro 14. Goodbye, 13-inch MacBook Pro. I will not miss your cramped screen and touch bar. Hello, 14-inch M3 MacBook Pro, the new entry-level Pro on the block. In many ways, this MacBook is my what could have been. Earlier this year, fed up with waiting for a larger iMac, I threw up my hands and traded in my personal laptop, a 13-inch Intel-powered MacBook Pro, for the 15-inch M2 MacBook Air. Because, if you have the means, you should keep work and personal machines separate. I briefly considered copying a 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro, but I was not keen to continue living that touch bar life and wanted a bigger display. The 14-inch had the M2 Pro chip, which was more chip than I needed for more dollars than I wanted to spend. In that context, the 15-inch made the most sense for my home setup. If this 14-inch MacBook Pro had been around, I would have been a lot more conflicted. The 14-inch MacBook Pro starts at $1,599 with a new M3 processor, 8GB of RAM, and 512GB of storage. For this review, Apple sent me a step-up configuration with the same M3 processor, 16GB of RAM, and 1TB of storage, which bumps the price to $1,999. This is just the base M3 chip. Apple also sells a 14-inch MacBook Pro with the Beefire M3 Pro and M3 Max. The M3 Pro models also start at $1,999, while the Max starts at an eye-watering $3,199. On top of more powerful chips, those models will get you more and faster. Thunderbolt ports, higher storage options, and more memory. Starting at 18 gigabytes for the Pro, up to 36 gigabytes, or 36 gigabytes, up to 128 gigabytes for the Max. Configurations can be a headache to sift through. 
But any way you slice it, it's annoying that Apple's base M3 starts so underpowered with just 8GB of RAM. And yes, I will get into why 8GB of unified memory is not enough. Number 1. Aegis US VivoBook 16M1605. Our best budget pick is the Aegis US VivoBook 16M1605 2023. Like the Dell Inspire in 16 2-in-1 2023 above, this is a 16-inch model, but it isn't a 2-in-1, so you lose the tablet functionality. You still get a nice keyboard, a large touchpad, and decent performance from its AMD Ryzen CPU. Its fingerprint sensor allows you to log in quickly, and its battery lasts around 8 hours of light use. Build quality is good, though not quite as sturdy as the Dell, as it's mostly plastic. Unfortunately, there are a couple of compromises. First, the display only gets to about 250 kits slash from 2 at full brightness, which is fine for most indoor settings, but not for sunny environments or outdoors in broad daylight. Next, unlike the Dell, there's only one USB-C port, and it doesn't support video output, meaning you can only use the HEMI port to connect to an external monitor. Last, the webcam is noticeably worse, as the image looks much softer and overexposed. Number 1. ASUS VivaBook 16M1605 Our best budget pick is the ASUS VivaBook 16M1605 2023. Like the Dell Inspiron 16 2-in-1 2023. Above, this is a 16-inch model, but it isn't a 2-in-1, so you lose the tablet functionality. You still get a nice keyboard, a large touchpad, and decent performance from its AMD Ryzen CPU. Its fingerprint sensor allows you to log in quickly, and its battery lasts around 8 hours of light use. Build quality is good, though not quite as sturdy as the Dell, as it's mostly plastic. Unfortunately, there are a couple of compromises. First, the display only gets to about 250C slash and 2 at full brightness, which is fine for most indoor settings, but not for sunny environments or outdoors in broad daylight. Next, unlike the Dell, there's only one USB-C port and it doesn't support video output, meaning you can only use the HDMI port to connect to an external monitor. Last, the webcam is noticeably worse, as the image looks much softer and overexposed. 